Praise God, family. We're back here again, live at House of Worship. It is a, we're having another Wednesday Bible night. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking the time and um, setting uh, this space for us to be together. Uh, today, we just want to uh, take a moment and just uh, thank our pastors as well that, you know, they're already in Orlando, Florida. They have been doing such a great job with this ministry, and we're so proud to be part of what God is doing through them. Aren't you proud? I hope you're proud. Because I'm proud. I'm proud to be part of what God is doing through them. You know, they're um, already, we already kicked off our Spanish service. And we're also going to have our family retreat coming down, you know, um, some, in September. You know, so if you don't know, get in the knowing. No, ask the question. We want you to be part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just go straight to what God has for us today. I'm excited about the word. I'm excited what for the thing is God is revealing to us, I mean, a pastor is done, man, pastor is doing such a great job with giving us uh, the word this Sunday. I don't know if you heard it, but if you haven't, you better get connected because we, we are speaking about the kingdom of God and what it really means to be in it. So today I'm going to do my very best to listen to what the spirit of God is giving me to give to you. I hope it blesses you. And uh, at the end of the day, if it does, let me know. Let me know, because I want to make sure that you receive what God is given to you. So before we get into the word, let's pray and uh, let's allow the spirit of God to move as he wish. Are you guys ready? I'm ready too. Let's have some fun. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for being so good to us. You have been beyond, Father, measurable. We can't even ex express how you, Father, have treated us. But we try with our very best to understand that we have a loving God that loves us so much that came after us. Even when we were unlovable, even when we were even attentive or aware, you continue chasing us. Today, we ask that the word that you give us may help us understand how much you love us. Not only that, show us how to be able to come in agreement with you, Lord, so that the will that you have for us may come to pass, Lord. We pray that everything that wants to hinder the word of God may be canceled in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, every father's self in my Lord, selfishness be canceled in the name of Jesus right now. Father, we pray that your word may come to pass. Father, we thank you for all that you do. We pray though that your will may come upon this place on earth at it, at it is done in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Amen, family. So, family, you know, I am going to read your ears off. Today we're actually going to read about 30 verses because I, 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 God is showing me something in this scripture. And the book that we're going to be in, it's Luke, uh, first chapter of Luke. And it's, we're going to start at verse 6. Right. And I'm going to just I'll just bear with me as I read this, these verses, because we're going to read uh, at least to verse 38. Uh, it's Bible class, guys. Get used to this. I mean, I normally don't, you know, go into it like this, but this is this is the, what God is leading me. And I believe it's going to bless you. So, again, so we start in chapter one uh, book. It's the Luke and verse is going to be six and on until I get uh, until I get uh, tired or stop. <laughs> All right. So verse six, Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commands and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. 
your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or all or other alcohol drinks. He will find, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the he will be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the father to the children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. So far, so what's going on? So let's explain. Zechariah is a Jewish priest. He's in the temple preparing the, preparing the ritual for that, for that, for the, for that, for that year. Now, Zechariah is a man that has faith, a man that is praying, and he also has a wife that also has faith. So what I want us to kind of focus on right now is the response of what Zechariah responds. Because what I'm trying to encapsulate today is one response versus another. So this is where um, we're going to get into it. So please continue with me. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well long years. So two things, right? One, his response to the angel is, I'm, how is this going to happen? I'm an old man. But not only that, my wife is down the road far along many years. So in that moment, he's, is he allowing himself to believe or not believe? We don't know yet. He's just responding. But so there's no problem yet. Nothing has happened. But let's read on. Then the angel said, I'm Gabriel. Do you know who I am? I stand in the very presence of God. Okay, so let's explain who's Gabriel. Gabriel is an angel of the Lord. He's a messenger. Gabriel's, he could have been upset because it says exclamation. I am Gabriel, exclamation. Or he could have been sad because here he's standing before a priest that is bringing instant to the Lord that should be able to be have certainty of who God is and what God can be able to do. But that wasn't the response that he got from Zechariah. So let's say that Gabriel was not angry and he was not sad. But maybe God was sad. Hold up. Does God get sad? When we don't respond the way he would like us to respond? Well, the Bible does explain that he is with the brokenhearted. So for him to be with the brokenhearted, he has to be able to feel our brokenness. So I think, let's pause for a second. God wants me to let those that have gone through brokenness. Right? These moments where the pain was a 7 and a 10, let's say. Right? That level of pain where every movement, every reminder, it hurts. But he also wants you to remember how he got you through that. How you were able to get over that. He was there. Now he wants us to remember someone that is going through those moments right now. Think about it. Think about those people right now. I want you to just send a, a word of, of healing to them, to their soul right now in this moment. Take the time. Say, Lord, heal them just as you healed me. Because you are the only one 
that can understand when someone loses a child. You are the only one that can understand when someone loses the ability of their limbs. You are the only one that can understand. Father, restore them right now. That's what I, I, I believe the Lord wants us to do. Don't forget that in those moments, we were never alone. You are not alone. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to read here. So we notice that Gabriel says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. <laughs> I, you see, it's easy for us to judge because we're out here, right? We're out here in the, in, like, and we're reading like, wow, how can you respond to the angel of God that stands before his presence, that sends you good news? That don't happen to us. We don't do that. We don't doubt God. Do we doubt God? Sometimes I think we do. Sometimes when I think we doubt God. And it's like, what do we do with that? Well, first of all, I, wanna, I, I, have, a, I have a list of something. Let me see here. Let's, let's define doubt. What is doubt? So I looked it up. It says, a feeling of uncertainty or a lack of conviction. Do because do, this is doubt. We have to understand doubt is not a friend. Doubt is not our friend. It is an enemy of God. And if it's an enemy of God, it's an enemy of us. We need to see doubt as an enemy. Anytime doubt, yes. If it's, you get, hey, should I go down this alleyway at 12 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, that you know, that's common sense. Don't go down that way because you already have the uncertainty that this is unsafe. But when the Spirit of God has sent a man of God, a woman of God, and the Word of God, has, you have been receiving it over and over and over, believe it. Again, the definition of doubt. To call into question the truth. To call into question the truth. Are you questioning God? Because... At this moment, Zechariah is. But he has his reasons. Hmm, reasons. Doubt follows reasoning. So the more you seek a reason why not to believe, the more reasons you will find on why not to believe. <laughs> so again, the definition of doubt. To lack confidence in Lord, oh my Lord, to lack confidence in, in who? In what you're believing. To lack any moment that voice of doubt shows up and starts speaking to you about how good you are, how unworthy you are, who you can't be, what you are called to be, because we're talking about being, because God talks about you being great now. You being the son and daughter of God now because he is a God of right now. He's looking to transform our character. He's looking to transform the way we go about business with our lives and his business. It's, it's parallel. It, ha it's, it works together. Last but not least, doubt, definition, to distrust, to distrust. And if you had to equal that out, it equals fear. Fear is what is behind doubt. Fear is the enemy of God. Notice how he's, every time Gabriel showed up, because Gabriel showed up a few times in the Bible. He showed up with Daniel. He showed up with Zechariah, he showed up with Mary. Now, every time he would show up, or even when God himself would show up, he says, fear not. There is a sense where our senses, this human being, is afraid of the unknown, is afraid of the things that God is trying to expose us to. But this is the thing, he, God knows and this is where we have to step in faith because everything we do in faith is pleasing to the Lord. But when we don't do it in faith, it's not pleasing to the Lord. So the scripture shows us 
that God gives us two things. He says he, he will give us the counselor, the Holy Spirit. So now if he has given us the counselor, that now counselor, consider that a counselor is someone that will give you advice and suggestion on how to go about the thing that you're after, the thing that God is revealing to you. You're not doing it alone. But it requires a level of force, a level of intentionality within the individual. If you're not willing to push through the fear, the doubt, you will not see. Like, you're going to read now what the angel of God said to Zechariah. So verse 24. But now, since you did not believe what I said, you will be silenced and unable to speak until the child is born. For my word will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. So, okay, is there a problem? What's the problem? Why, is, why did the angel of God not allow Zechariah to speak at that moment? We could guess. Let's guess. What do you think? What do you think? That, why, why, why? He says, you know what? I came to give you some good news. But I don't know. I don't like the way you not putting respect on, on my God's name. Put some respect on my God's name. I'm going to silence you. That's it. Cut down. I think if we look at scriptures, there's a couple of things that talks about the the, the, the power of the tongue, the ability to be able to, to, to manifest what God already revealed in the, in the man's spirit to come out. And in, I, I perceive that it can be that, hey, I don't want this to be hindered. Because, and the way I'm going to make sure, I'm not going to let you speak. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that you're silenced until it's manifested. Hint, hint. Don't speak what God has not told you to speak. Until it's manifested. Hint, hint. Don't allow dream killers to take it. What God has already told you he's going to do. Because it needs to be birthed first before it can be killed. Does that make sense? Because it makes sense to me. It makes sense because the thing is that sometimes God speaks to us. And when God speaks to us, the first thing we want to do is, we want to say, Lord, hold on, hold on, not that way. Give it to me this way. The idea is we need to understand how to be coachable. What, who is the most coachable person that you know? <laughs> is, it, is it you? You? Oh, let me ask another question. Who is the least uncoachable individual you know? Because <laughs> if it's you and that end, you need to get to the other side of the most coachable individual you know. Because how can God give you instructions on what to do and how to do it and you not be okay on doing it? Are you going to give him an attitude? you going to give him a face? If that's the case, we're going to be stuck. We're going to be stuck not experiencing the glory of God on this earth. We'll be saved because we got Jesus. But who wants to experience the glory and the abundance of God on earth? Amen. So this is, this, these are the parts that we need to get and understand that God is speaking to us about being able to take instruction and complete them to fulfillment. Do it in complete work. I believe that God is doing something in the, in the church to raise the level of excellence in each individual. He's calling us to be excellent. Not to, when I, and when I say be, I mean like in the moment, in the right now, every second, to raise your level of excellence to see the glory of God and see the fulfillment of what he has called each and every one of us to do on this earth. And that's with our families. That's with our children. That's with our career. That's with our, with our health. That's with our finances. Every aspect of our life, God wants to be involved. And when God's involved in every aspect of life, excellence is what's the result. 
Amen? Amen. Okay. Verse 21. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon after, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is. She exclaimed, he has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Isn't God great? Isn't he amazing? He answered a prayer to these folks. He answered them, even though there was a doubt, even though there was reasoning trying to say, how are you going to do this? I can't see it done. I can't, I don't see how you're doing it. But God did it anyways. God did it anyways. Because he is a God that keeps his word. He's a God that honors what he says. And this is, the, this is this, in this passage, you understand that God is trying to come, is trying to make a plan of salvation come to pass. He's starting with John, and then we, we, and if we can, we're going to continue. You're going to see how he introduces the birth of Jesus as well. But this is, today's topic is the different response. Your response, is it a righteous response? Is it a faithful response? Is it a scripture response? Or is it a, I think, I don't know, let me see response. So, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will Conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. I love that. Yes, amen. Now, here we go. The response. Remember, respond versus response. Which one, is, which one is your response when God tells you, I'm going to do it? I'm going to do it. Do you believe? Or let's see what Mary says. Mary asks the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Woo! What more? What's more? Your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was burdened, but she has conceived a son and is now in the, her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. I want you to stay with that right there. The word of God will never fail. If God has said that he was, he's going to save your family, he's going to save your family. If God said that he's going to heal you, he is going to heal you. If God said it, count it done. Count it done. It's money in the bank. Certainty, sure. You want to believe it? Great. 
it would be easier if you believed it. Because if you believe it, what happens is you're going to be able to enjoy the process. Enjoy the moment that you have right now. Instead of waiting for it to happen, believe it and see it already done. Give God glory for it right now. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you promised. I see it and I agree. I agree. I come to it. Mary's response, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. Hmm. Acknowledge who you are. Identify for who you are. May everything you have said about me <laughs> come true. And then the angel left her. Mary's response is amazing. It's something that to be honored because Mary believed what God said to her, but he also, she also knew who she was. She acknowledged herself as a servant. Are you willing to consider yourself Jesus' servant so that he can be able to glorify himself with your life and in every aspect of your life? Your response is important. We have to manage our in. in in eternal conversation, the way we respond, God hears it. So today, I leave you with this. As I close up and I pray, and I want to have us also understand that God is listening to our hearts. God knows our needs. So as we get ready for also to give and our tithes, we want to make sure that you not only acknowledge who you are, but who's the resource of all you have? As you give, Lord, I give faithfully. Lord, thank you for allowing me to receive this. Because I want to just have you understand one thing. This is a prayer. This is a prayer that David prayed. David prayed a prayer, and he said, God, all power, all mighty, all might, all majestic, all glory comes from you. If you want to take the time and read that on your own time, it's First Chronicles, right? First of Chronicles, uh, chapter 22, uh, verse 10 and on. That is a strong, powerful prayer. He understands who his God is. If you don't understand who your God is, we're going to allow doubt to come and bully us. I come today to speak to those that felt intimidated that have been intimidated all their life, feeling that they are unworthy, feeling that they can't do it. I come today in the name of Jesus to free you from those thoughts. You can do that and more. God has called you. You are responsible to respond to doubt and fear. I will not be intimidated. God will handle it. I will take the step. I will do the preparation, and I will do what God tells me to do. That is my prayer for you tonight. So as we close, we're going to just thank you so much. Let's just come together in this prayer because this is a word that God wanted us to hear. He wants to free us. He wants to allow us to be able to know that we can do all that he said we can do. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the Holy Spirit that enables us and encourages us and shows us how to be able to do what you called us to do. Thank you for the power and the authority that you've given us to be able to cancel out, Lord, fear and doubt, to rebuke the negativity, Father, of our ancestors. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that those, Father, that had faith, Father, before we were even born and prayed for us, that we may be able to harness and use those prayers to do what you called us to do. I pray, Lord, that this word may have blessed, Father, your people. I pray that everything, Father, that you have desired for them was said today. I pray that the word may, Father, bring fruit. I thank you, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, thank you again so much for being with us. I appreciate your time. Again, please don't forget to... Send, you know, those tithes and offering is highly important. This is how we are able to keep this place running. We need your help. All right. So I'll see you next uh, Sunday. God bless you. Have a good one.